Right, we have uh, probably enough functional group chemistry um, behind us now to look at the topic of structure activity relationships. Um, this short course of slides is only really just uh, intended to introduce you to the topic. It's, it's a very extensive topic, um, but we've chosen a, a couple of examples to maybe illustrate some simple chemistry that you've come across and put it in context of the biological targets um, that uh, the chosen drugs um, uh, interact with. Okay, so what we're going to look at first is the structure activity of aspirin. And aspirin is a prostaglandin H2 synthase uh, inhibitor. And uh, here, shown on the screen, is the X-ray structure containing um, a salicylic acid, um, which we'll discuss in a moment, a cofactor heme, which is in the active site of the enzyme, and a modified serine residue, which appears in this particular crystal structure, which uh, the relevance of which will become uh, apparent in a moment. And there's a link to uh, that site. Okay, if we take a closer look at the um, prostaglandin H2 synthase um, site, we will see um, that uh, here is the heme site. It's an iron-based enzyme which manipulates um, oxygen to interact with its substrate to, um, uh, for prostaglandin uh, conversions and prostaglandins are involved in the pain pathways in the body which is why uh, pain and inflammatory pathways in the body which is why um, aspirin is a, an anti-inflammatory uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, so here we have uh, our salicylic acid and um, we're going to talk about how that, how that uh, comes about um, in this depiction, I've taken this um, uh, set of coordinates in a, in a computer uh, graphics package and just changed it slightly to reveal, strip away all this cartoon to show you the protein structure, strip it away to leave the uh, salicylate in place, the heme, and a modified uh, serine residue. This is how aspirin works. Uh, aspirin is actually um, an acetylated phenolic compound um, and in the body uh, the aspirin finds its uh, target organs. Uh, it interacts with prostaglandin H2 synthase um, and uh, aspirin finds its way to the active site of that enzyme and that binding site and the binding site, substrate binding site near the the heme, the iron-based cofactor of the enzyme. Um, very close to that heme site is a serine residue, and that serine residue is a, 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 an alcoholic side chain. Now we've discussed amino acids, we've talked about the importance of knowing uh, side chain chemistry, and here's a specific example. Um, so serine falls in the class of neutral polar side chain amino acid. It's an alcohol. The close proximity of aspirin to that alcohol and with possible uh, involvement of neighboring groups uh, within, within the uh, polypeptide chain, a transfer of the acetyl functionality to the serine causes a modification of the serine, thereby um, actually inactivating the enzyme um, pretty much permanently. Uh, in the presence of the salicylic acid which remains in the binding site. It's a transesterification process because we are we are taking one ester, this is the ester functionality, this is the alcohol moiety and this is an acetyl function on it and we're transferring it to another alcohol and the acetyl ends up on that other alcohol releasing the alcohol of the original uh, ester. This is a uh, 2D diagram of the interaction site and um, I'm going to talk you through the interactions of salicylic acid with that binding site. Here we have the modified serine residue um, that's, that's uh, in the active site. There are hydrophobic interactions which uh, so the um, valine, tyrosine and leucine 
alanine leucine arc round here provides a hydrophobic arc of residues again the importance of understanding amino acid side chains and their nature uh, are, is important in understanding small drug protein interactions and these residues cradle the uh, aromatic um, hydrophobic side of the drug and allow that to bind to the active site there's a covalent bonding from the aspirin uh, to, uh, to serine and the transfer of the acetyl group to that residue there. And then there's an ionic interaction which locates the um, carboxylate uh, moiety of the aspirin to the positively charged arginine that's very close by. And this is quite a strong interaction and helps secure what is actually quite a small molecule into that active site. We're going to take a... Uh, um, if I just say that aspirin actually interacts across two enzymes known as the COX enzymes, COX1 and COX2, and they are alternate names for prostaglandin H2, uh, H2 synthase and H1 synthase. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at, at flerboprofen, which is a non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory. Some might say a second or possibly even third generation uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, and uh, we're going to look at how it binds at one of the COX enzymes. Uh, it just so happens that we have to choose a COX-1 because um, um, a flebiprofen, I don't think flebiprofen has got a structure for a COX-2 enzyme So, and they're very closely related in enzymes. So in prostaglandin H1 synthase, flobiprofen um, binds close to the uh, uh, heme site, the same. It binds adjacent to the serine residue. Now, flobiprofen is quite different in the fact that it doesn't have an acetyl group to transfer to serine. So it isn't an irreversible inhibitor. It's actually, um, in the strictest sense of the terms, a covalent modifier. It's actually a, um, uh, a type binding uh, reversible inhibitor. Although to get it off of the enzyme is actually quite difficult. And we look at the, if we look at the interaction map of, for flobiprofen and the residues within that enzyme, um, here's our, uh, I think this is our nearby serine residue. Um, we have uh, a hydrophobic arc again involving tyrosine, leucine, valine uh, and so on, alanine. All around here are hydrophobic residues which comfortably recognize this much more hydrophobic grouping on uh, flobiprofen. And anchoring flobiprofen down to the rest of the structure is an interaction with um, interaction with uh, ar the arginine residue as previously in, in the COX-2 aspirin situation but we've got an additional interaction with tyrosine in a hydrogen bonding to the carbonyl or to the carboxylate I should say uh, of flobiprofen making flobiprofen a, a, a very tight binding um, uh, inhibitor. There is no covalent bonding from flubiprofen to serine, as I've mentioned, because there's no functional group to do the transesterification. So it falls into a slightly different class of, of uh, enzyme inhibitor. Okay, we're going to skip over now to slightly different systems, and um, we're going to use the idea of. Um, if we just come back to here, the idea of uh, looking for pharmacophores, um, pharmacophores if they haven't already been defined to you will be in, an, in another course, but we're looking for functional groups that confer biological action of uh, certain molecules. Now this um, molecule in the middle here is ergotamine, it's part of the ergoalkaloid family um, and the ergoalkaloids are, uh, this ergoalkaloid, ergotamine, is distantly related 
to uh, LSD-25, um, lysergic acid diethylamide, um, or LSD. And we know about LSD and how that interacts as a street drug with the brain, uh, CNS, but LSD also has other uh, actions in the body, as does ergotamine. Now, ergotamine has um, uh, peripheral interactions as well as CNS interactions, so brain and outside brain interactions, um, and uh, in particular interacts with the serotonin pathways in the body. Now, if we bring up serotonin, uh, in the first instance, serotonin looks quite a different molecule. We, we can see aromatic nature, we can see uh, an uh, a five-member ring with an NH in which looks very similar to that and there's an, a primary amine group in here but may, it may not be so obvious um, what, what the functional groups in ergotamine are that interact with the serotonin system. So serotonin is a, uh, a basic amine which interacts with a G protein coupled receptor at the cell surface of um, uh, tissues throughout the body. Um, so what we're going to do is take take this amine and try and teach you the principles of how to look at molecules for functional group spotting. If you rotate this molecule around um, in this direction, we can see that, and maybe another 30 degrees, we can see that there is some... Uh, maybe a bit more obvious resemblance of functional groups within ergotamine. We're not picking up anything obviously similar here. There's nothing obvious. We do have this here. And um, trying to reposition the molecule in such a way as uh, we can spot um, functional group similarities um, is a sort of a, 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 a trick that medicinal chemists play in their mind's eye. They can do it in their brains and think about how molecules move around. But some people do find this a little tricky. Now, what we've got here, we've turned the molecule around um, through an XY plane effectively, and we've lined, aligned it to give us very similar aspect of these functional groups here. Yes, we haven't, adapt we haven't uh, accommodated this one yet, but we've certainly got two, uh, two functional groups in a very similar position. We can get this third one, third functional group, into a similar position by allowing it to undergo a bomb rotation, which wouldn't be too difficult for that molecule to do. Um, when we do that, and consider where the aromatic amine is and the aliphatic amine is now, what we find is we can superimpose serotonin quite, quite nicely onto the ergotamine framework. And this is effectively the pharmacophoric um, entities, uh, despite still not having picked up the OH group for, for that, uh, uh, that uh, molecule. There's no OH on ergotamine. We take it away. You can see there's nothing there. But what we have superimposed are elements of serotonin on here, which means that, got, that we can now start to explain why ergotamine might interact at a serotonergic receptor. The serotonin is part of the beta phenylethylamine family. Um, this is the alpha position, this is the beta position away from the amine, so this is known as a beta phenyl ethyl amine, so it's beta phenylethylamine, and this is quite a common fragment within CNS active um, uh, ligands and drugs, but uh, CNS active ligands such as serotonin, uh, adrenaline, uh, histamine and so on, um, dopamine, all have this common framework in, uh, which you'll learn a bit more about later on, I'm sure. Other things we can do with uh, functional groups is to look at similarities in possible chemical uh, properties. So here we have um, dozolamide. Dozolamide has um, an aliphatic amine, a sulfone, 
Now, um, it is like a soul phone is like a ketone, but a ketone is too too reactive generally to put into uh, drug-like molecules. Um, ketones accept nucleophiles a little too readily to use that functional group too widely within drug-like substances. So here, uh, a ketone has been changed into a sulfone, uh, but when we do a bit more sulfur chemistry, you will find that the sulfone functionality is not dissimilar to a ketone. A sulfonamide, however, is a little more trickier. Now, a sulfonamide um, would you would expect the chemistry to be very similar to uh, uh, a, a, car, a, a carboxy, uh, carboxylamide, uh, carboxamide, um, but it actually is slightly different, and it's because of the nature of the S um, O double bonds um, in the sulfonamide functionality. And the difference is this: that the sulfonamide can actually act in an acidic fashion. Um, the NH2, which you would have thought would be uh, basic, uh, amino-like, um, should be a little less basic because it's in a amide-like environment, um, but you probably wouldn't expect it to be acidic, but it is acidic, and an H plus can dissociate from a primary sulfonamide, um, and that is because the concomitant um, uh, anion that's formed is resonance stabilized. Carboxamide and carboxylic acid. Uh, so you uh, are sh being shown here, and you're you're really seeing the chemistry of a an aromatic, um, and this is this is almost aromatic. Well, this is an aromatic five-member ring here, and this is a simple analog of it. Uh, you're expecting the chemistry of sulfonamide to be somewhere between a carboxamide and maybe somewhere between a carboxylic acid.